This is an artist named Gustav Klimt, and he was born in 1862 in Austria, and he is a painter. His father was actually a gold engraver and an artist and taught Klimt, Gustav, and all of his children how to paint. So Gustav had a, a brother also who also painted with him. And when he finished art school, he actually painted this mural on the ceiling of an opera building with his brother. And they painted very realistically all these different scenes that you can see in here. But after a while, Gustav got kind of tired of um, doing these kinds of realistic paintings and he wanted to do um, more canvas art, so more painting on canvases. And he got really into a pattern and bright colors and he got really tired of painting really, really realistically. So he started getting into these bright colors and later on he would add swirls and patterns and uh, the way he would use his brush strokes. And he loved pattern and would find them everywhere. And you've probably seen pattern all kinds of places in nature. So here's a honeycomb pattern, a snakeskin pattern. You can even find pattern in hotels or your apartment or house or your school. You can find pattern everywhere, even in buildings just repeated shapes, even in your clothes. Here's all kinds of pattern that these ladies are wearing in their clothing. So take a look around your place and see what kind of patterns you can find. But after a while, Klimt got really interested in gold. Remember his father was a gold engraver and he started using gold in his paintings. And he was really inspired when he traveled and saw these mosaics. They're Byzantine from the medieval period. And these are mosaics used with glass and tile and gold. And it's all pattern because they're all little bitty stones all set next to each other. And so he would look at these types of mosaics and see all the pattern in the clothing and these long robes that uh, this lady's wearing and all the gold in there. So he really, really liked this type of work and started doing it in his own work. So here's one of his most famous paintings called The Kiss. And this is how big it is. This is in the, in the museum in Vienna, which is in Austria. And you can see that it is indeed two people kissing. He was really interested in love and uh, how to show love on a canvas. And so you can see he's still very bright colors and patterns, continuing with all kinds of rectangular patterns and circle patterns and swirling lines, um, all the way up into here where the kiss is taking place. And the most realistic part of this is the people and actually their faces look kind of disconnected from all this pattern here. Uh, and that is, is what he wanted to do, that the focus is on the people who are so close and then all the pattern behind it. And here is another embrace, kind of like a hug. And all of the people that he has are always wearing these long robes with pattern on it. And this is actually part of a mural. Uh, the bigger mural is right here. And there's that couple that we just saw. And this one is actually called the Tree of Life. And you can see all the swirling patterns in the trees. And here's a woman over here who's watching and looking. And she's wearing a triangular pattern on hers and they're wearing a circular pattern on theirs. And you can see that this Tree of Life, so the Tree of Life talks about from birth all the way until death. And so there's lots of symbolism in here. You can see this blackbird. A blackbird across all different kinds of cultures is a symbol of life and death. So from beginning to end. So there's lots of symbolism going on in here. This is part of a whole new period of art called Art Nouveau, which means new art. And here's another one. So one interesting things about Gustav Klimt is when he was 12, his sister actually died. 
And then when he was 30, his father and his brother, who he went into art with, died. And so he was very upset about that for the rest of his life. And so he was very focused in on life and love. And so here's a picture of um, a mother and her baby sleeping. And so this is just part of it. It's much bigger, but I thought I would just show you this part. And you can see the, the waviness in her hair and these patterns all in her hair that are flowers. And here is another um, very famous painting. This one actually sold for $135 million the last time it was sold. And this is called Adele Blockbauer, which is her name. And you can see, again, he's using lots of gold here, lots of pattern here. And the most realistic part of this is her face. Her skin looks very realistic and everything else around it is Art Nouveau. Look at these swirl patterns, all the circles. This reminds me of the Tree of Life right there. Does it remind you? And the eye symbol is also a life symbol as well. And you see it all over this painting. And here it is hanging in a museum. So you can see how big it is compared to this person standing there. And then one last painting. This one is not in his golden period. This is using bright colors, but I wanted you to take a look at all the different patterns. And again, how the face is the most realistic part of his painting here. You can see her and her long robe, which is all pattern. So next, we're gonna talk about the art project that we're doing. To begin, you're gonna need glue and scissors, cardstock paper, and a magazine. And I want you to go through the magazine and find pictures of people who they have a pretty large head where you can see their whole head. There's one there. And part of their bodies a little bit because we are going to do something like what Gustav Klimt would do, where there would be a realistic head or face, and then everything else is gonna be pattern. So I want you to tear out a photograph that you think will work and use it. This one is pretty huge, and that might just be too much for um, that much space behind you. But pick one that you like, and you can go with it. It can be just a head, I've made one previously that was a head and arms and legs, feet, but we're just going to do a head here. And you are going to go ahead and cut it out right around her, her skin, right at the very edge. Now then, we have got her head, and you're going to pick how you want it to be on your paper. Do you want it to be vertical? Does it fit best vertically where we can add interesting things to her? Or will it be better horizontally where we can add interesting things to her? It's completely up to you. But right now, she doesn't have a body or anything going on. So go ahead and add glue to the back. And you don't want too much glue, otherwise it'll take forever to dry and it'll leak everywhere. So don't put any glue in the middle, just along the edge. And glue it down. And I'm gonna have her head go right off the top since it's flat. If you wanna be a little more fancy and interesting, you can actually cut out her, around her hairline so that she doesn't have any hair at all and you can create her own, your own hair for her or put her in a hat or something. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep this on the simpler side of things for those of you who uh, are new to art. All right, once she is glued down, or he, whatever you chose, you are going to grab a pencil and divide your background up. So the, the background is called negative space. So here's the positive space, all this is the negative space. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is give this person a body. And Klimt um, had them always dress in robes, so I'm just gonna have her 
also dressed in a robe. So there's her clothes right there. So her head is sticking out of it. All right. And then um, you can go ahead and add some random shapes behind her large sections that you are going to fill with pattern of different kind. And just separate it out. All right, so now she has some interesting um, shapes going on back there behind her, okay? So uh, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a thin Sharpie marker. This is an uh, ultra fine point and you are going to outline each of these and if you need your glue to dry first you can go ahead and let your glue dry because getting wet glue on a sharpie messes up your sharpie now some areas you might want to be thicker than others some of these outlines so i'm going to go ahead and thicken up a few of them which you can actually grab a thicker Sharpie if you want, or you can just make it thicker and color it in. step will be to go ahead and add some pattern. So pick a space that you want to work with and try to remember the types of patterns that Klimt would use. So he really liked those swirly patterns. Remember like the tree of life and you are going to fill in your space with whatever patterns you think of and that either you want to use or that you think Klimt would want to use. And if you don't really remember, you can always go back, rewind, and see what kinds of patterns uh, Klimt was using again. Remember, there were swirls, circles, triangles, rectangles, all kinds of things. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this one up. pick another area that you want to go ahead and fill in with different types of pattern as well. the clothes you want to go ahead and add a collar around the neck or some kind of a design around the edges of the sleeves so that the person looking at it knows that that is where the clothing begins and ends so it breaks it up from the rest of the pattern from the negative space 